this video is going to be an introduction to the entire course on applied corporate finance and we are broadly going to discuss uh, first principles around corporate finance and how do we use it in an applied context as we go along so this particular introductory video is going to cover initially what is going to get covered in unit one which is essentially the principles of corporate finance with real world focus so we're going to use a lot of live examples in uh, in terms of understanding whatever uh, the focus of corporate finance would be that's uh, that's why the term applied in the course name uh, we're going to look at the key objectives of decision making as to what is the right objective of decision making for any any firm uh, what was the historically classical objective which was around maximizing of stock prices and are there any other alternative objectives which are available and then we look at what kind of limits uh, traditional corporate finance faces and if there are any solutions to those and then we start looking at individual components of uh, applied corporate finance in subsequent units of this particular program uh, quick disclaimer the contents of this course are heavily inspired by professor uh, ashwat damodaran's uh, course curriculum on applied corporate finance examples and contents however have been suitably modified for us uh, we would however thank professor damodaran for making most of the content available on the web for all the learners some of the slides have the content which has been used from their slides so we have uh, kind of uh, given the source wherever we have uh, kind of taken their slides specifically keeping the learning context uh, with respect to uh, our uh, our context in india we have suitably modified most of the content around that but the broad theme kind of lies around that so we begin this discussion with an understanding on what is corporate finance now everything that a business does basically every decision that a business makes there is going to be an impact on the financials of the business and any such decision which has a financial implication would be termed as a corporate finance decision now whether you price a product at a certain level because you want to maximize your profit around that product whether you are uh, planning to do capacity expansion whether you are raising money in the form of debt or equity whether you are paying a dividend uh which bank are you raising your money from all of these are decisions which essentially have financial implications and hence all of these would basically form under the purview of corporate finance so it's important for us to kind of look at these decisions objectively when we are trying to analyze a company right now broadly under corporate finance there are three major decision points all kinds of decisions that a firm takes would primarily fall under three major decision points the first one would be the investment decision the second one would be the financing division and the third one would be the dividend division decision right so these are the three decision points investment decision financing decision and dividend decision these three decision points basically form bulk of what we are going to study around corporate finance right let's understand that so when you talk about the investment decision it's the idea of where do you allocate resources so allocation of resources is what is going to come here right that's why that's that's because resources are limited there is only a finite amount of money every business has opportunities however are unlimited you could use that money in marketing you could use that money in putting a new factory you could use that money in variety of projects which are available the decision on where to deploy these resources is the investment decision now the logic of the investment decision could be to maximize revenue maximize share price maximize profit uh, maximize societal impact of the firm but any decision that is under the purview of allocation of resources of a company is going to be under the investing decision right so that's what is going to be called as the investing decision that a firm takes then the next question comes is 
where do we raise money from for all these investments that we were doing so these resources included a resource such as cash where do we raise the money from how do we get that money what should be in other words the optimal debt and equity mix right so the mix of debt and equity and the optimal mix at that which kind of maximizes the objective function that we have in corporate finance that decision would fall under the purview of what is called as the financing decision right and finally once the firm has kind of taken the investment decision they have decided on a certain debt and equity number there is going to be a decision on how much of the firm's funds would be reinvested in the business reinvestment would happen if the firm perceives that there is a lot of growth and how much should be returned to the owners which is essentially both in a sense if there is less growth then you return the money and in other word increase the returns for the owners of business or shareholders of the business this decision would form under the purview would come under the purview of what is called as the dividend decision how much of the profitability of the firm has to be distributed in the context of dividend obviously dividends are the opposite of reinvestment so how much of the money is reinvested in the business is a part of this decision which is the dividend decision so primarily these are going to be the three decision points which we are going to discuss in a lot of detail understand what kind of objectives they are trying to fulfill now broadly under traditional corporate finance what we are going to look at now is a view of the firm and uh, try and understand uh, this from the objective uh, function that we are going to create under traditional corporate finance right now traditional assets and liabilities balance sheet of the firm is what we already know of we are now looking at a balance sheet that is in the context of corporate finance as a subject right so the bulk of it remains the same so on the liability side you have both debt and equity which is basically people who have given you money both for short term and long term um, on the asset side however we have changed the classification a little bit the assets that are available today right which could include your fixed assets which could include your current assets which could include any kind of intangible assets that you have today are all assets in place assets which you are going to create for future which is basically going to be your investments which is going to give you the growth is what is going to create value for the firm all these assets we are going to call them growth assets right now the valuation of assets in place is not difficult it is the valuation of the growth assets which is what is going to create value for the company in the long run correct so that's what a bulk of our focus has to be assets that the company has already invested into our assets in place the value of these are available expected value to be created from growth via future investments is what is called as the growth assets and bulk of our discussion would lie here in the context of uh, data your debt claims are essentially fixed claims you know what uh, what is the claim uh, that is there as a debt holder it's a fixed claim and it's on the cash flows and usually the maturity is fixed so you know if you have taken a loan for 5 years that what is the payment going to be each year and at the end of 5 years you have to return the money whatever is left is the residual claim on cash flows usually perpetual it should keep happening always till the time the company exists these cash flows would continue to happen right so in a way now if you look at the firm's scenario if you look at the firm scenario and you want to maximize the value of the firm right you want to maximize the value of the firm right then you have to maximize the value of all these assets right and today's assets value is available so you have to maximize the value of growth assets 
correct any any investment that you do should maximize the growth assets of the company now within the right side of this this part is considered fixed you know what is the outflow and you know what is the tenure of that outflow so practically maximizing the growth assets part would also mean in a way maximize the equity value of the firm right so the objective of corporate finance basically drills down to either maximize the value for the firm which eventually in an environment where the debt value is fixed would result in maximizing the value for equity right we'll come back to this in a moment but to summarize the entire discussion on what kind of decision making we are looking at in terms of the first principles that we look at for corporate finance our idea is to maximize the value of the business right the firm's value has to go up how does that translate into something else we will look at that at, at a later point of time the three decision points are the investment decision the financing decision and the dividend decision let's look at them one by one the investment decision basically means that you have to invest in assets remember growth assets right and why are you investing in growth assets that earn a return greater than the minimum acceptable hurdle rate so what is a hurdle rate we are saying that there has to be a minimum accept acceptable rate of return on any kind of project you take any kind of investment you do right what is that hurdle rate this hurdle rate should reflect the riskiness of the investment and the mix of debt and equity used to fund it so essentially let's say you're investing in a less risky company you may be okay with a 10% hurdle rate but if you are investing in a very risky project you may want 20% return from it so this hurdle rate should reflect the riskiness of the investment that you are doing and you know eventually because you have to kind of uh, raise funds using both your uh, tools such as debt and equity it will also reflect the mix of debt and equity that is used in the in the in the funding why is because all your funds are going to be either debt or equity so what is the cost of these two is going to drive your hurdle rate in a sense if your debt is coming at 10% and your equity is coming at 20% argument sake and you're taking half and half then your hurdle rate automatically becomes 15% the average of these two right so the hurdle rate should come there and the return should reflect the magnitude and the timing of the cash flows as well and as well as all the side effects of the cash flow so the return that you generate should look at magnitude and timing which means we are eventually going to look at some sort of present value calculations if the cash flow happens 5 years down the line versus it happening 2 years down the line the same cash flow obviously earlier is better so we are going to look at the time value of money in the investment decision when we look at that right more on this as we go along so we will look at each of these in detail and substantial time will be spent in understanding these data points the financing decision is find the right kind of debt for your firm and the right mix of debt and equity to fund your operations right so optimal mix of debt and equity will maximize the firm value we'll see how and we have to look at the right kind of debt technically if my investment my asset is for 10 years i may want to look at a debt which is also 10 years in other words short term requirements need short term debt like working capital right long term requirements will need long term debt that has to come from my financing decision that's an important parameter in the financing decision that we're going to look at dividend decision is if you cannot invest money in areas which can make a minimum acceptable rate if you cannot find such investments that can make your minimum acceptable rate then you have to return the business uh, return the cash to the business owners there's no point keeping that cash right if you can't really invest that cash uh there's no point keeping it with you because the business owners or the shareholders could basically find a better use for that entire cash 
So how much cash can you return depends on current and potential investment opportunities and how do you return that cash? Do you just return it in the form of cash dividend or you offer something called as a buyback? That is the important decision that will come under the purview of the dividend decision. In a nutshell, we're going to spend a lot of time trying to understand what is the investment decision, what is the financing decision and what is the dividend decision and how do we look at this objective of maximize the value of the business? Is this the correct objective? Our next few videos are going to discuss about whether this objective makes sense. Is there a more specific discussion around this objective? And does that translate in a sense into what is called as maximizing of stock prices? And just as we end the video, a couple of questions for us to kind of take a look at. Discuss the major decision points in corporate finance and what do you mean by growth assets for a firm?